Welcome back to the, welcome back to the core swatching series. This is episode 15 and we're going to be looking at the dark colors. In this video we're going to be taking a look at Payne's Gray made with PB15:3, PBK7 and PV19, Carbon Black made with PBK7, Ivory Black PBK9, Neutral Tint made with PY42, PR122 and PB15 colon 3 and we have the Ardois Grey made with PBK19. First up we have the Payne's Grey and this texture is so atmospheric, it's amazing. I love this colour, I think it's an awesome colour. Just like, you just paint that and, and you have an instant moody background for you to probably paint over with gouache because you're not going to get much seen over this but just just look at that that is a dark foresty magical misty place it's really awesome it also of course means that the color value drops significantly after stage two and I would say stage one and two looks the same. And then you have three and four that looks the same. And then a lighter one here. So if you want an even gradation, then you're going to have to put a little bit more work in. But if you just want to chance it and see what kind of moody background you get, this is would be a fun one to trust the paint and the process. You definitely need to be not a control freak if you want to use quart for sure but if you just let it do its thing then it's going to create some beautiful results for you tiny tiny bit of cauliflower but for the amount of excess water i use to to test out how they handle water i think this is a good result especially considering its main color pigment is pb 15 colon 3 it does really, really well. It is classified as semi-opaque, and I would agree with that. Classified as staining, I would also agree with that. Because it's quite staining, it's pretty good. I see just a little bit of lifting here. I don't know if it will show up in the camera. If not, check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash autocarno, because I will put high risk scan of this and all the other test sheets. Just a tiny bit of lifting here, but other than that, it's pretty good. It's very high in tinting strength again. We, we have a whole run of high tinting strengths. There's definitely more high tinting strengths color, like ratio wise, in the neutrals that are quite surprising. I mean, paint's gray, it's not so surprising, but like the browns that we've had, they've been quite surprising in how high tinting strengths they have been. Just look at high tinting strengths these colors are. It's pretty serious. I would say it's granulating. I see a lot of texture happening here. It's not classified as granulating, but you, you get a huge amount of texture here. Maybe it's flo flocculating, which by the way, I realized when I was reading up on flocculation that I've been saying it wrong. I think I've been saying it flocculation this whole time. So thank you for your patience in putting up with me mispronouncing things. It is made with PB15 column 3, which is your cyanide blue green shade, PBK7, your lamp black, and PB19, your quinacridone violet. When you do the dispersion, I think the blue travels a little bit more. You see a lot of blue gray happening out here. Uh, you get quite a lot of ridging happening here. By the way, ridging is a term that I've just come up with when they do this. It's it's not cauliflowering. It's a much more interesting texture. It feels more... I, I will talk more about ridging when I come across a colour that is perfect to explain it. If in the meantime, ridging means something else that I probably shouldn't call it that, then please do let me know in the comments down below so I don't keep making a fool of myself. Anyway, mass down and then some dispersion of the halo. Not a huge amount of halo. It probably wouldn't go too far. It's not like the Venetian red, but you do definitely get the halo that is a little bit more blue coming through in its color. 
Then we have the carbon black, and this is definitely a granulating color. I see a lot of texture happening here. It's, again, not classified as granulating, but I definitely see a lot of texture. And we get stage one, two, three and four is pretty similar, and then five. It does suffer from cauliflowering. Carbon black, I'm just gonna bring out the next color so you can compare and know the difference between the carbon black and the ivory black. The ivory black is warmer. Carbon black, I wanna say it's a cool blue. I would say it's a medium, nice middle blue, but we don't have another black to, like a lamp black to show you which one's gonna be. So since it's between these two then i would consider carbon black to be the more cooler one ivory black to be the warmer one but this is a pretty good medium like in the middle black it is classified as opaque and i would agree with that it's classified but it's really hard to tell black strip on a black black paint on a black strip but anyway it is classified as staining and it is good at glazing but you see a lot of texture happening here. this is why i'm like it's either granulating or flocculating but i don't care there's a lot of texture happening it is very high in tinting strength again and you see huge amounts of texture happening here it is made with pbk7 which is the lamp black and in terms of dispersion it's pretty similar to the paint gray you get this mask down with lots of texture in the edges feathering and then a very light halo then we move on to the ivory black which is classified as granulating and i would definitely agree with that i see a lot of granulation here but it it's kind of just a faint hint of it rather than like oh it's definitely a blue granulation we get one, two, and then three, four, five, kind of similar. You get nice smooth transitions between the stages. So if you want soft gradation, then this is a nice one. It also handles water very well, no qualifying whatsoever. So if you are a little bit heavy handed with your water or you're not confident at it, but you still want that soft gradation, then this is probably gonna be the better one than the carbon black. It is classified as opaque, I would agree with that. It's classified as staining and it's definitely se only semi-staining. It lifts up so much more than the carbon black and it's almost non-staining, but I definitely see some color here, so I would classify it as semi-staining. Because it's semi-staining, it's pretty bad at the glazing. It, it lifts off really, really easily. Again, it's very high in tinting strength. You get nice strong color mixes and you get nice textures. I don't know which one has more texture. I mean, I would argue that these ha have more texture than this. I'm, st I'm starting to avoid saying granulation or flocculation because it's the same result, just different causes is what I'm gathering from what I've been reading because I don't know the cause of this texture, I'm just gonna call it texture for now. It is made with PBK7, which is the bone black, and it disperses much more. The mass tone is lighter because everything disperses much further. You get a ridge here, but the lighter mass tone stops here, but you definitely get darker halo happening here where the mass stones kind of carried through or the pigment where the pigment is carried through then we have the neutral tint which is i would say like a blue green and a softer version of the dark colors that we've been seeing it's definitely got this greeny blue undertone to it and it's definitely not as strong a neutral tint as I've seen in some brands. This is the only, I think, brown neutral color or brown and dark colors that isn't classified as very high in tinting strengths. So if you are looking for something that is going to work better with your cobalts and ultramarines and all those more natural pigments, then do check out the neutral tint over the other colors it's going to work better on your palette it has one two three four stages and i do see a little bit of granulation 
it's a very subtle sort of granulation i wouldn't notice it's a granulating color unless it was classified as that i would have probably missed the, the fact that it's a granulating color it's that subtle and faint kind of color it's really good at the water handling there's no cauliflowering even with the excess amount of water that i use to test these colors for that it is classified as semi-transparent and i would agree with that it is classified as staining i would say this is just semi-staining it comes up pretty it comes off the paper pretty well it is at the glazing you see lots of lifting i wouldn't say it's terrible but it's also not great at it I would say it's a medium tinted strength. It's not super weak. It will so it will play well in both high tinted strengths and low tinted strengths palette or mixture. But yeah, if you're used to all the other core browns and darks, then this is gonna be a little bit of a surprise to you as to how light this tinting strength is. It is made with three pigments py42 which is the yellow and iron oxide pr122 the quinacridone magenta and the pb15 colon 3 the cyanine blue green shade sadly neutral tint doesn't disperse too much it does a little bit as in you know i put a drop on it and it disperses zero haloing i was really surprised at how little this went so you might be surprised if you're expecting like a wild haloing happening with because it's a cool one. I would say this is definitely different from the rest of the the browns and dark colors from Quill. And then finally for this video we have the Ardois Grey, and this is a much much more delicate affair. It's very low in tinting strengths, and you know. In terms of value, it just goes nowhere near the value of, say, the ivory black. I would say the Mastone is comparable to stage two of the ivory black. So you're not going to get a huge wide range of value from the Ardois Grey. I think you would pick this, though, if you really like heavy amount of granulation that shows quite a lot. This, I know the other colors are granulating, but this is way more textural than the other ones on its own however it doesn't go down smoothly certainly not on Barkingford cold press paper so if you want a more smoother look go for the other colors this you pick for what it is which is a paler more textural more granulating color on its own i see one two three four five if i squint um Although four and five, I would argue, is the same. It's just it's got a line in the middle. Because it's heavily granulating, you're not going to have a problem with water control. It's not on a cauliflower on you, which is nice. It's classified as transparent. I would definitely classify this as semi-opaque. I see a lot of pale deposits on the black line. It's classified as non-staining. I would agree with that. So I would take this as similar in behavior to like a cobalt violet. It's just a light gray version of a cobalt violet. It is, because it's non-staining, it's terrible at glazing, so don't try it. Well, you can try it, it's just, just be aware that it's gonna lift very easily. It might be what you're looking for. I, ne I would never say don't do something. Just be aware and make sure your paint is gonna that you choose is gonna do what you want it to do. It is low in tinting strengths, and you see the granulation happening in the colors because it's a almost a neutral gray. It's a warm gray, but it's a pretty close to a neutral gray. It's not gonna affect the colors as much. It's just gonna give it a more muted color and a lot of granulation. It is made with PBK19, which is a slate black, and I have a note of unique pigment in that this is the only brand that has PBK19 so far from what I've seen on its own. Winsor Newton has Davis Grey that has is a mix, 
and it has PBK19 in that mix, but it's a mix of four, so you're really not going to see it. Whereas Quo is the only brand that has PBK19 on its own. So if you are one of those people like me who really want to find unique pigments that other brands don't have, go for this one because no other major commercial brands have this color as the time of recording. That's it for this video. What did you think of these colors? Which one was your favorite? I think this, these colors are really unique. They're strong in personality. The paint's great, hugely moody, has strong ridges, ridging. Please let me know if ridging means something else that I shouldn't be talking about. I don't know if it does, but it kind of sounds like it might have another connotation. It's got these edges that have hugely moody and textural the carbon black and ivory black both granulating ivory black is smoother in transition of the values than the carbon black and carbon black suffers from cauliflowering so you need to watch out for that neutral tint lovely bluey yellowy greeny kind of neutral color and then a very very delicate ardoise it's either ardoise gray or it's ardoy gray we will find out. I'm sure Eva will be able to tell me. It kind of sounds like Adoui, Adoise. It kind of feels French to me. So if it is, then I'm sure she will let me know in the comments down below. If you have like a particular use for any of these colors, do let us know in the comments down below, especially the Adoise Grey, because this is such a unique and interesting paint that if you have good uses for them it will really be helpful to the community if you let us know what you use it for and how you, you use it for and what you think is great about this color thank you so much to core for again providing these amazing paints for me to test so that i can share with you guys what each of these colors do it's great fun and thank you for watching this video please do subscribe and hit the like button and in the next episode is going to be the white colors and the sparkles so we will see you in that episode bye